Hello, I'm Caitlin Huey Burns. We're interrupting you to take you to Doral, Florida, where officials are updating the search efforts underway at the site of the Surfside building collapse. Last night, officials took down the remaining section of the building. Landed on the existing pile. And a little over an hour afterward, we received the all clear. And then right around midnight, work commenced on the pile, and by 1 a.m., we were in full search and rescue operation mode. To collapse an entire apartment building is a devastating decision, and the demolition was in no way a decision that I made lightly. Bringing the building down in a controlled manner was critical to expanding our scope of search. Truly, we could not continue without bringing this building down. The area closest to the building was the area that we had not been able to access, and that is where we, we needed to go. And uh, previously, it was not accessible due to the enormous risk to the team of first responders because of the instability of the building. And as we speak, the teams are working on that part of the pile that was not accessible before the building was demolished. <clears throat> The standing structure also posed a threat to public health and safety, particularly as the storm approached, given that the tropical storm force winds could have brought it down in a manner that could not have been as controlled and predicted. So I am extraordinarily grateful to the demolition team, the engineers, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Team, the Miami-Dade County Police Department, and everyone who played an integral part in executing this operation safely and successfully, including the town of Surfside. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge and reflect on the great tragedy that this has been for those who've survived the building and have had to evacuate. The world is mourning for those who lost their loved ones and for those who are waiting for news from the collapse. To lose your home and all your belongings in this manner is a great loss as well. And my heart and deepest sympathies goes out to all of the families who have had this tragedy. Our, fam our, our teams are doing everything possible to help those who lost their homes begin to rebuild. FEMA is here and has been from the beginning and they've been doing an incredible job to sign up families for individual assistance. And we're working with insurance companies to streamline the process of submitting claims as much as possible. And we've raised millions of dollars thanks to the generosity of people in this country and all around the world. Their generosity has been overwhelming and it is going to be very very important to put these funds into these families hands to help them to rebuild and meet their unmet needs and they have already been getting this assistance i also want to stress once again that we took every action that we possibly could to search for any pets any animals in the building prior to the demolition in the days since the collapse, the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Team conducted multiple full sweeps of the building in person, including searching in closets and under beds and other hiding places. In the areas of the building that were not accessible to the teams, they used ladders on high lift cranes and they placed live animal traps on the balconies at great personal risk to our first responders. Also, doorways were opened, other means for the pets to escape the building if they were able. <clears throat> we deployed drones with thermal imaging on numerous trips over the rubble pile and also standing in the tower in areas unsafe uh, for search and rescue teams to enter. So I want to say as clearly as I possibly can and urge our community to understand that we went truly to great lengths to take every step that we could at great risk to our first responders to ensure that all of the pets that were beloved family members, that none of them were left in the building prior to the demolition. Since the first responders were able to resume their work on the collapse last night, we have very sadly recovered three additional victims. The total number of confirmed deaths is now at 27. The number of those accounted for is 191, 
and unaccounted for 118. Please join me in praying for those who lost their lives, the families who mourn, and for all of those who are still waiting. We continue to monitor Tropical Storm Elsa and expect that Miami-Dade will mostly experience heavy rain and some winds throughout today and tomorrow. I was grateful to have the opportunity to speak with some of the first responders on site last night, right after the demolition, before they headed back out to the pile. On day 12, these men and women have continued their mission. They have the same determination and strength as when they got out on day one. It is a true honor to serve alongside these heroes and sheroes from the state, from the federal, and from the international teams, all of our partners who've made this historic effort possible. Me enorgullece ofrecer una actualización de que la demolición de anoche de Champlain Towers Sur se ejecutó exactamente como estaba planado. La demolición comenzó a las diez y media de la noche e, y en poco más de una hora recibimos el toque, el todo claro. Alrededor de la medianoche se reanudó el trabajo y la una de la madrugada nuestra operación de búsqueda y rescate comenzó nuevamente. Derrumbar todo un edificio de apartamentos es una decisión extremadamente difícil y la demolición no fue de ninguna manera una decisión que tomé a la ligera. Derribar el edificio de manera controlada fue fundamental para expandir nuestros esfuerzos de búsqueda en la pila más cercana al edificio que anteriormente no era accesible para nuestros equipos. También quiero tomarme un momento para reconocer y reflexionar sobre la gran tragedia que es para aquellos que sobrevivieron al edificio y fueron evacuados. El mundo entero está de luto con los que perdieron a sus seres queridos y los que esperan noticias del colapso. Perder su casa y todas sus cosas de, de esta manera también es una gran pérdida, pérdida. Y mi corazón y mi más sentido pésame están con todas las familias. Nuestros equipos están haciendo todo lo posible para ayudar a quienes perdieron sus hogares a comenzar a reconstruir. FEMA está aquí y ha estado haciendo un trabajo increíble al inscribir a las familias para recibir asistencia individual y muchos ya han recibido. También quiero enfatizar una vez más que tomamos, tomamos todas las medidas posibles para buscar animales en el edificio antes de la demolición. Quiero decirlo con, con la mayor claridad posible y instar a nuestra comunidad a que comprenda que hicimos todo lo posible y tomamos todos los pasos que pudimos con gran riesgo para nuestros socorristas para asegurarnos de que no quedaron animales en el edificio antes de la demolición. Desde que los primeros en responder pudieron re reanudar su trabajo en el colapso, lamentablemente hemos recuperado a tres víctimas adicionales. El número total de muertes confirmados ahora es 27. Las personas contabilizadas son 191 y desaparecidas son 118. Otra vez, oremos por aquellos que perdieron la vida, las familias que están de luto y los que están esperando. Continuamos monitoreando la tormenta tropical Elsa y esperamos que Miami-Dade experimente principalmente lluvias intensas y algunos vientos hoy y mañana. Estamos en el día 12 y los hombres y mujeres que continúan su misión con la misma determinación, la misma fuerza de voluntad que lo hicieron el primer día. Yo lo vi. Es un gran honor para mí servir junto a estos héroes. 
nuestros extraordinarios equipos de condado de Miami-Dade y todos los socios estatales, federales e internacionales que han hecho posible esta operación. Mi corazón está con ellos y con toda nuestra comunidad. Gracias. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Vice Chair for the Board of County Commissioner, Commissioner Oliver Gilbert. Good morning. I don't have much to add um, more than what the mayor said. First, I would just like to thank her for her leadership and, and her strength in this. Um, it, it's important because when you become, when you get elected mayor, you don't think that this is going to happen. We don't prepare for stuff like this. And so watching her serve and lead through this has been truly, it's been my honor to serve and lead with her, with her because because that's, that's what leadership is. It's getting something that's unanticipated and doing the very best you can and bringing people together while you do it. Look, 12 days ago, I think I stood in front of a microphone and I said that we're going to work, we're going to pray, and we're going to get through this together. And that's what we're doing. We're praying, we're working, and we're getting through this together. That, that takes different forms. Last night, the building came down, so that allows us to expand our search. That, that's, that's the work that has to take place. You know, as we, as we move forward in this process, I just want everybody not to forget the praying part. Because we're still playing, praying to, to possibly find survivors. We're, we're praying for peace and answers for the family, and we're praying that we can find the, the information. We can figure out exactly why this happened. Because th this, this, is, this side of the microphone, and I'm sure that all of them would agree, is the, the worst place in the world in a situation like this. You don't ever want to be delivering bad news to a community because it's just those families that are hurt. It's the entire community. The weight of that building coming down, those buildings coming down, is on this entire community. And, and it's been a long ride for us. Look, it's not lost on me that we celebrated the 4th of July yesterday. And we didn't actually celebrate, not like we do. But last year, we didn't actually celebrate like we do either because of COVID. And, and so it seems like we've been this, in this kind of malaise for a while as a community. My commitment, her commitment, our commitment is that we're going to pray and we're going to get through this and come out of this together. I, I know that we can do that. I know that we will do that. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. National Weather Service, Robert Moyeda. Good morning. Uh, we're tracking Tropical Storm Elsa near the south coast of Cuba this morning. The forecast, although the forecast has the center of the storm passing closer to the west coast of Florida, we will still feel some uh, intermittent showers, uh, especially tonight and tomorrow. And these uh, showers and thunderstorms will have some brief but gusty winds, and these winds could still be uh, quite strong across the area, as well as locally heavy rain and localized flooding, possible, and uh, even the possibility of one or two tornadoes across you know, South Florida. So this is for a time frame of tonight and tomorrow. Eh, en español, eh, seguimos eh, siguiendo... Eh, la tormenta tropical Elsa, que está cerca de la costa sur de Cuba, aunque el centro de la tormenta se espera que esté más cerca de la costa oeste de la Florida, eh, aquí en el sureste de la Florida vamos a experimentar eh, vientos eh, fuertes en ráfagas con estas lluvias que van a pasar sobre nuestra zona esta tarde y también esta noche y mañana tanto como posibles inundaciones eh, debido a estas lluvias fuertes y la posibilidad de uno o dos tornados. Gracias. Thank you, Mr. Moyeda. Division Director for Office of Emergency Management, Deputy Incident Commander Charles Surreal. Good morning, everyone. Residents and visitors are urged to continue monitoring Tropical Storm Elsa as it makes its closest approach to South Florida. Starting this evening, residents should avoid any unnecessary travel as strong winds and heavy rains may make driving hazardous. If you have any questions, you can always call 311. Their, their hotline is open between hours of 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Residents can also access disaster-related information 24 hours a day on what to do before, during, and after a storm at miamidade.gov slash hurricane. Due to our own preparation, we continue to work at the county's emergency operations center. Later today, we will begin implementing plans to redeploy our assets at the collapsed site. 
Our Office of Communications will provide you with information as necessary as to when we will move and the hours and times of our future briefings. The, the family assist, details on future briefings. The Family Assistance Center will maintain service hours between 12 p.m. and 5 p.m. daily. Our total number of families served to date is 127. FEMA, as we have all been in a unified command, is also supporting our efforts. In order to access information on individual assistance for families, survivors, please go to fema.gov slash disaster slash 3560. Anyone who has been impacted by this tragedy or wanting to stay up to date with the latest information regarding our response to Surfside can visit that website that I just mentioned or www.gov um, slash uh, <laughs> miamidade.gov slash emergency. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Para traducirle lo que dijo el, comand el, el comandante del incidente, Charles Surreal, el le voy a traducir. Residentes, si nuestro visitante se le urge que continúe monitoreando la tormenta tropical Elsa mientras se va acercando al sur de la Florida esta tarde y la noche. Empezando esta noche, se le pide a los residentes que no estén manejando por las simples razones que pueden haber fuentes, fuertes vientos y también lluvias que lo hacen muy peligroso. Si tiene, si tiene cualquier otra pregunta, se le puede, pueden ir a la línea del 311 que van a estar operando de 8 de la mañana hasta las 7 de la noche para recibir más información. Residentes pueden también también acceder a información 24 horas al día al miamiday.gov diagonal hurricane. Parte de nuestras propias preparaciones, también vamos a estar continuando trabajando aquí del centro de operación del, del, de emergencia del condado localizado en el Doral. Más tarde en el día vamos a estar implementando planes para poder eh, mandar eh, recursos necesarios a, hacia el sitio del colapso. Más eh, información, del, de, información de las localaciones o las horas de informes breves pueden, eh, van a estar proveídas por la Oficina de Comunicación del Condado. El Centro de Asistencia Familiar va a mantener su servicio durante las horas de 12 de la tarde hasta las 5 de la tarde diariamente. El número total de familias que han asistido es 127. FIMA también ha sido apoyado todos nuestros esfuerzos eh, y también para los servicios de las familias que han sido impactadas y ha lanzado una página FIMA.gov diagonal disaster diagonal 3560. Cualquiera persona que haya sido impactada de, por esta tragedia o se quieren permanecer a información al día pueden utilizar este link para para poder ayudarlo de este momento en adelante. Y en este momento, and at this time, uh, our Creole translator, Leonel Lerebor. Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Jeudi à nous atteint 19 jours, pardon, 12 jours après que l'incident est arrivé. Jeudi à nous a confirmé que j'en nous te prévois gain démolition qui fait sous site là pour reste bâtiment qui peut tomber là ça fait hier soir à 10h30 euh à soir donc Kounia parti ça il est en attente équipe nous enterré était sous place et équipe là était travail à partir de 1h du matin à recherche et nous capable dit que démoli un building on parti dans building c'est une grosse décision que lié et nous t'ai fait ça parce que structure était représenter grand danger pour monde qui a travaillé sous site là Pour le moment, FIMA sous place, la travaille avec avec tout acharnement que nous te connaissons et il a fait tout ça au connaît pour nous capables vivre dans la phase rebâtie. Il y a plusieurs millions de dollars qui sont ramassés et pour qu'on y a nous capables de monde qui gagne inquiétude pour animal domestique que gagne yo. Nous faisons tout effort pour nous capables de chercher. Il y a des gens qui prennent échelle, des gens qui cherchent en bas cabane, dans le côté qui est accessible, des gens qui qui fait des choses qui font dans la closette pour nous chercher des animaux, y, y compris nous servir avec des drones pour qu'il y ait un effet thermique pour capable faire des recherches. Nous faisons tout ça pour nous pour des anima, animaux domestiques. Hier soir, dans des combios, il y a eu trois morts additionnels. Et ça qui portait Chifio Kounia à 27 morts. Nous que nous rejoignons à niveau 191 pour le moment. Elsa a approché et ça capable de passer dans Miami de Kounia, capable de gagner la pluie d'ici fin journée avec journée de mer. Pour le moment, l'équipe secouriste a travaillé en pile, nous avons parlé avec eux récemment. Ça que nous sommes capables de dire que nous avons été avec les gens qui ont souffert 
et nous sympathiser avec eux. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Arabo. We're going to go into questions and answers. We also have present here Deputy Fire Chief Arthur Holmes, along with the Miami-Dade Police Department Director, Freddie Ramirez. So please raise your hand, wait until you're called upon, and address the speaker. Willard? that, but I think we're really... Everyone, I'm Caitlin Huey-Burns. Thank you for joining us. We've been listening to officials in Florida update us on the remains of Champlain Towers in Surfside, Florida. We're going now to Governor Ron DeSantis, who is also providing an update to reporters. Let's take a listen. The National Weather Service, obviously, we're working with all the local counties affected, but bottom line is we're going to take Miami-Dade out. We're going to take uh, a couple other interior counties in southern Florida out. We'll be adding a number of counties in the northern half of the state, and again, the most recent and track is we're looking at impacts north of Citrus County, probably in that in that Dixie County area. And if we continue to see any movement uh, beyond that, then obviously we will update people. We do, though, do not anticipate when it's in the Gulf of Mexico that this storm is just going to end up going west of Florida. That, that is not every single model is in agreement that once it's in the Gulf, there is going to be a movement back northeast. And we obviously anticipate that that will impact the state of Florida. So we're ready for that. But we are, as much as you don't want to have to deal with these, the movement west, at least for this Surfside site, means that the impacts here should be incredibly, incredibly minimal. May get some rain. You may get a little bit of wind, but nothing like we were looking at maybe a couple days ago with us tropical storm force gusts. And with that, I'll introduce the Kevin Guthrie, Emergency Management Director, and then we'll do the Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for your leadership on this. Being able to respond to two incidents statewide at the same time um, is something we're very accustomed to, and it makes it much, much easier when you have your leadership, sir and ma'am. Uh, the only thing that I'll uh, just kind of put an ex exclamation point on what the governor just said is I did talk to the state meteorologist. And I did talk to uh, Dr. King Graham at the Natural Hurricane Center. Uh, both of them wanted me to let uh, all of our uh, residents know Probably the most two significant uh, updates we're going to get is at 11 o'clock tonight and 5 a.m. in the morning on the next updates. As it comes and emerges off the coast of Cuba, there could be the situation where the center may reform to the east or may reform further west. We just don't know what it's going to do when it hits Cuba. So again, as it comes off of Cuba, somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock tonight, they're going to try to uh, get a really good forecast on it at 11 p.m., if not 11 p.m., 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So, again, if you watch the late night news tonight, pay attention to the forecast there. If not, see the ones in the morning on the latest updates. Uh, the last thing I would say is, again, do not focus on the center of this storm. Do not focus on the center of Elsa. It is going to start encountering some wind shear, and it's going to become you know, lopsided or asymmetrical. Uh, and it's going to push a lot of rain onto the east side of this storm. So, again, be very, very uh, cognizant of that and make sure you look at all of the weather forecasts that come out in your local area. And, again, I'll reiterate what the governor said. Please pay attention to your local emergency managers. They know your area best. They will uh, order the evacuations based on what's going on in their county. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank the governor and the lieutenant governor for being here, and I want to correct a serious misstatement that I made uh, recently. I said that the governor had been here very often, almost every day. That was incorrect. He's been here every day. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, I also want to touch on a couple things that, uh, that I learned from walking the site this morning early and, uh, and listening to the families at the morning briefing. Uh, we have rescue crews working now in six different places. Uh, we were back to work 20 minutes after the demolition was completed. The demolition was executed flawlessly, and the rescue team said none of the existing pile where there are victims still was affected. Heavy equipment is now being able to be employed in the rescue effort where before it was not. That's a significant change. Uh, because now our men and women who are out there on the pile can utilize that equipment because we've got millions of dollars worth of equipment thanks to Florida Governor DeSantis and the Lieutenant Governor. We've got everything we need. Operations are now moving much faster than they ever have. The only remaining potential barrier is dangerous weather, which may or may not occur. Bad weather 
The search and rescue will continue for 24 hours a day, bad weather accepted, lightning specifically. The uh, search will continue for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until we pull everybody out of that rubble and reunite them with their family. Again, I want to thank the governor for his uh, flawless support here. Surfside, Little Surfside really appreciates it. The fact that he's been here every day is amazing. He's got his staff here. The, the Dade County Mayor has been wonderful. As a matter of fact, I want to congratulate the, the Dade County Mayor for her decisive leadership with respect to the demolition. I met with the governor two days ago, and he and I talked about the need to bring this building down in light of the storm. There was the very real potential where this storm could have knocked the building down in the wrong way on top of that pile, which would effectively ended the search and rescue. Um, that that uh, message I delivered to Mayor Kava. All her experts had told her it would take three weeks. To her credit, she went back, she talked to additional experts, and she came back 12 hours later, and now we know what happened. The building's gone, the threat is gone, the work continues, and I'm very hopeful that we're going to be seeing some miracles in the coming days. Thank you very much. Muy buenas tardes. El gobernador más tarde va a revisar la orden ejecutiva para añadir varios condados al norte. Tal vez en ese momento va a remover Miami-Dade y tal vez otros condados que no están ahora eh, en peligro y con riesgo debido a la tormenta tropical Elsa. Eh, sabemos que esto es algo que obviamente va a cambiar. Eh, ahora actualmente está encima de Cuba, pero cuando sale por encima de Cuba sabemos que todos los meteorólogos piensan que eso va a tener impacto directo a la Florida. No sabemos en este momento si será al norte de Tampa, pero vamos a seguir monitoreando y conversando con los expertos. Y por favor, eh, ténganse a, 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 con respecto a lo que es el anuncio de las 11 esta noche, va a tener la información más actualizada. Sabemos que el edificio ayer se concluyó lo que es la demolición, un día obviamente muy triste para los sobrevivientes de esta tragedia, pero muy necesario para seguir y continuar con los esfuerzos de la eh, rescate y búsqueda y también para ayudar lo que es el peligro y el riesgo que estaba corriendo nuestros rescatistas. Eh, continuamos con eh, la operación de busca de rescate y sabemos que eh, los que están trabajando día tras día eh, les pedimos que seguimos orando por ellos porque ha sido un esfuerzo muy difícil para ellos y les agradecemos a todos los que han venido a ayudar aquí a la Florida. Muchas gracias. Okay. I don't know for sure on that. I do, I can tell you that because that newly accessible area where it was, that happened to be where a lot of the master bedrooms are, that they, they have made identifications from there. I don't want to say all, but they really believe that they are going to be able to make, uh, uh, that the identifications will be able to accelerate now that they have access uh, to that because of it had been inaccessible and then because there were likely a lot of people who were sleeping at that time, unfortunately, in that in that part of it. Yes, ma'am. So some of the people that survived the that, that left the tower. That no, look, I think it's a huge issue. Obviously. The, the search was, is the priority because a building came down, we have people unaccounted for, and you got to find, you got to identify. And we obviously uh, would have liked to have seen some folks rescued over these many days, and that, that has not happened yet, but, but the identification, the search has got to continue. Then you also have people who fortunately were able to get out. Well, guess what? They were never, we knew they were never going to be able to go back to that building. I would have loved for them to go in and get their, their belongings, but every single person said it's too dangerous that you could potentially have people die if that were to happen. So obviously it wasn't worth that risk. We cannot lose any more people. And so the thought that, that was kind of the discussions were they're not going to be able to ever go into that again. And it potentially creates problems for the search effort, especially with the storm. So we're just going to have to deal with it. So you deal with it. The problem, though, is that people's lives were in that part of the building. And that's a, that's a tragedy, too. 
There's going to be everything from valuables to keepsakes. And now this is their home. Now, some people have multiple residences. That may not have been their primary, but some people, that was their primary. So how do you get them back on the feet? So what we're doing in terms of, obviously, you have the FEMA individual assistance that we were approved for. So we think that that's something that, that needs to be done and is very important. But also all these fi private charities. There's a lot of people that want to help. You have the stuff that went to the surf, the, the support surf side. You have the shoal at Bar Harbor. You know, I've talked with other folks here in town. They've raised money in, in other vehicles. And so we're going to work to help that. And I can tell you this, if there's somebody that needs a place to stay, there's folks just on this strip who are going to put people up. I spoke with the owner of the Four Seasons. He, he's willing to put people up. They've raised money. So there is a lot of support. And I was just speaking with Charles Burkett about this. We need to, if people are generous, we need to make sure that money is getting channeled into these relief efforts. Now is like the most important time because it's the most difficult situation. Then, obviously, as you get beyond that, these are folks who, what their insurance, we want to make sure, I've spoken with Jimmy Petronas about making sure the insurance companies are responsive to these folks, particularly under the circumstances. So they're going to have insurance claims, and then there's going to be obviously other things in terms of making them as whole as you can from, from the loss of property. But and you're going to have a lot of mental health impacts from people who are able to get out. Obviously, the families who lost somebody, that's going to be the most devastating. But I've spoken with a number of the folks who've been able, who were able to get out. This is a really harrowing experience. And you literally have people that, had their unit been 20 feet another direction, they would have been in rubble. And so they're there and their neighbor has never been heard from again. And so this is something that's very traumatic. So the mental health aspects are going to be very, very important. And this is something that is going to be require long-term support. But I can tell you the support is there. Getting through some of the bureaucracy to, to channel that sometimes in situations like this, unfortunately, can be, uh, can be something that we have to do. But the support is there. This community South Florida, all of Florida, and really people throughout the country have wanted to do it. And we were actually just speaking about ways, uh, the mayor and I were just speaking about other ways that we can channel some of this generosity into relief efforts. The, the, it's great to have a FEMA, and it's great for them to provide individual assistance. But understand, that's a bureaucracy. There are certain things that you have to do. It's not as flexible. When we have folks, particularly in a community like this, that are able to step forward, if someone needs a hotel, you can have that. And, and longer term stays, they're, they're willing to do that. So that's really important. So we're going to be working on that, doing that. Can you walk us through the timeline? Where can, what can we expect next? And also, when does this become a very different property? Because it's well, the, last, the, the, the latter part, I will leave to the, the fire department and Miami-Dade County. I will say this is ongoing. We basically cleared, I think, a lot of the remaining hurdles. So you're going to see them working round the clock like they have been. I think they're going to make more and more progress. More and more things are accessible. As you look, because the building was brought down just according to plan, it basically fell into place. Why that's important is because you can now use heavy machinery to get rid of the rubble where we know that that was not part of the original collapse. Had that building fallen over the original pile, well, then the evidentiary issues, the search issues, all of that would have been much more difficult. So they're going to be doing heavy machinery on off Collins Avenue right there and on the sides. They're going to be moving that away, I think, pretty quickly. And then behind, of course, on the east side, you will then see the traditional search that will be able to now access every part of that pile, which they hadn't been able to do up to this point. So I think it's going to move a pace. I think the momentum is very strong. A lot of those folks, I was able to, they pulled a couple of the guys off the rubble when I went to see it this morning. And they said, yes, this is the area where we were not able to get into previously. We're there now. We think we're going to make a lot of progress. Okay, time for one more. Yes. So the question's on the Israeli, what's the role of them going forward? They're, they're on the pile now. I just uh, was able to say hello to some of the folks that were going on in the next shift, thank them for their efforts. They're invested in this. 
And I think that, I mean, many of you who've been here for a while, you, I think you've gotten the sense of this, but these folks, when they get involved in this mission, this becomes very personal to them. They want to be able to get the answers. They want to be able to identify. They want these searches to continue. And I think that that's what you're seeing with the Israelis. They've been very, very helpful because they came in with a computer model of the building. They understood different rooms. They understood where it would make sense to search. And that information was used by our search and rescue teams to, to really help channel the effort in a positive way. So we thank, thank them for their support. We think that they've done a really good job. And I think they're here because this, there's an emotional attachment now to Surfside for the people that have been involved in this mission. And I don't think you're going to see people want to get off that pile until all we have all the answers that we need. And that's not just for the Israelis. I can tell you some of the folks in other states who have now come, we're taking care of them well. They're on the cruise ship. They're getting taken care of as they should be. But they're here and they really want to make a difference and, and it's meaningful. And I don't even need to tell you about the Miami-Dade folks. I mean, this has been something uh, that they've been, um, I mean, it's changed all their lives for sure. And this is just a mission that, that they're going to see through uh, until the very end. I will probably not be able to make it back tomorrow given the storm. I don't think, I think the, the weather is probably going to be nasty. It'll be probably difficult to fly. So we're still going to be here offering support with, with some of my staff. And obviously we'll be likely working out of the state emergency operations center as we continue to monitor the impacts uh, of ELSA. We do think, of course, we will start to see impacts in, in Florida tomorrow and into Wednesday, and we'll be ready for that. Thank you.